city of San Francisco is situated on the northern end of a hilly peninsula. On one side is the Pacific Ocean, on the other, the vast bay of San Francisco. The city's founders were the Spanish settlers who came with Portola in 1769, but its builders were the adventurers who flocked to it during the gold rush days of 49. Adventurers from all the world who turned the quiet mission village into a metropolis. Today, it is a beautiful and great city with massive towers of steel and stone standing as symbols of its progress. With her city custom cash card, Rashida earns cash back. The city's main business thoroughfare is Market Street, and few streets in America can boast more traffic and activity. Crowded streetcars constantly rush in pairs up and down its four sets of tracks. Curious sights to strangers are the tram cars which are turned around by hand on circular tables in the pavement. These cars, which are light enough for two men to push, are hill climbing cars. They are drawn by moving cables that run beneath the street, and in them, San Franciscans go roller coasting up and down their hilly highways. San Francisco is built almost entirely on hills, and some of them are so steep that stairways take the place of streets. Automobiles are parked at precarious angles, and you often wonder just how slight a push it would take to send some toppling to the bottom. One of the most celebrated sections of San Francisco is Chinatown, the largest Chinese community outside of the Orient. Here, the exotic odors and ways of old Cathay still exist. Oriental lanterns are the streetlights, and many ornate curving roofs springs the skyline. Most attractive is the telephone exchange, built in classic Chinese style. There are more than 20,000 permanent Chinese residents in Chinatown, many of them American born. Chinatown appeals particularly to shoppers, who spend hours browsing about in the attractive stores among the exotic wares from the Orient. To many, Chinatown is most attractive at night, when neon signs blaze and shop windows are brightly lighted. San Francisco is the proud possessor of the two greatest bridges in the world. The longest single span in history is flung across the fabulous Golden Gate, the entrance to San Francisco Bay. The distance between the towers is four-fifths of a mile, more than 700 feet longer than any other single bridge span in the world. The longest bridge in the world is the Bay Bridge, connecting the city of Oakland on the mainland with San Francisco on the peninsula. The bridge, which cost $77 million is eight and a quarter miles long and crosses the largest landlocked harbor in the world. It has two levels, the lower for trucks and electric trains, the upper for six lanes of fast-moving automobiles. San Francisco owes its existence to the vast bay and its great port. The Embarcadero, the famed waterfront street, is faced for miles with row upon row of splendid docks and up and down it rumble railway cars and trucks carrying the cargoes of ships that sail the seven seas. One of the most romantic parts of the waterfront is the International Settlement, the Barbary Coast of old San Francisco. 
once fame was the wickedest spot in America, it is today only a street of a few cafes and many memories. In the days gone by, men from across the ocean brought to San Francisco taste for foreign things to eat and drink, and ever since, our good food has been famous. The most picturesque part of the waterfront is Fisherman's Wharf, with its miniature harbor, where the fishing fleet waits for the tide. It's fashionable to dine at Fisherman's Wharf, where giant crabs and shellfish are served fresh from boiling cauldrons in the open. Fisherman's Wharf, with inside of the Golden Gate, is San Francisco's beautiful yacht harbor. Great craft from faraway lands tie up from time to time in this truly cosmopolitan port. At one pier, bobbing up and down, is a gilded teakwood junk that made the crossing from China in 87 days. And almost next to it, a silver metal flying clipper prepared to take off on the same journey and to reach its destination in less than six days. The great flying boat circles the bay and then slips away into the clouds that herald the coming of San Francisco's fogs. The fogs, which creak in from the Pacific to blanket the city with mist, are world famous. People think of fogs as nuisances, but in San Francisco they are not. For during the months from May until October, when almost no rain falls, they cover the land with a gentle veil of moisture, bring new light to the trees and flowers, and keep down the summer temperatures of the great city. Experience personalized city in America has more attractive residential areas than has San Francisco. They hug the shores of the bay, or ramble in well-ordered patterns up and down the sides of the many hills. Empire builders reared marble mansions on the tops of the hills, and other citizens erected dignified homes along fine avenues. Rows of small houses line many streets, their attractive architecture contrasting greatly with the gorgeousness of some of the earliest homes of the city. Most lovable of the city's inhabitants is Cicero, crack master of Golden Gate Park. His friendliness, even with strangers, is typical of all San Franciscans. His special domain is a pond among the dwarf cypresses and pines of the tea garden that was a gift to the people of San Francisco from the Emperor Meiji of Japan. A perfect oriental garden in a setting 6,000 miles from home. A garden that for more than half a century has delighted thousands in this city beside the lake. Among the trees of Portsmouth Square is the only monument to the memory of Robert Louis Stevenson. On Sutro Heights, in a garden of 60 years ago, weathered stone figures gave down upon the green trees of Golden Gate Park and upon the white sand of San Francisco's magnificent beach. San Franciscans are justly proud of their many public buildings, for they are among the finest of any city in America. The Palace of Fine Arts is a beautiful reminder of the Panama Pacific Exposition of 1915. Mission Dolores, founded by Junipero Serra, has watched the pageant of San Francisco since the beginning. The marble Legion of Honor houses treasures of tapestry, painting, and sculpture. There is a certain beauty even in the massive walls and severe architecture of the United States Mint. But the pride of San Francisco is the Civic Center, where a monumental group of buildings have been created to serve and beautify the city. They are placed around a spacious park, planted with beds of colorful flowers and alleys of trees, where the idle while away their time in the sunshine. In the center of this group stands the City Hall, one of the most beautiful municipal buildings in the world. Its proud dome, rising more than 300 feet above the street, majestically overlooks the fascinating and romantic metropolis of Western America, San Francisco. 